Uh, my name is Kyle Mitchell. I am a senior at Troy High School down in uh, Fullerton, California. And I am a programmer. I've been for five years. I'm a computer science major down at the high school. And I am now going to be attending the University of Riverside as a computer science major starting in the fall. So very excited for that. So my presentation today is called Engineering, Living in a World of Technology. So I wanted to make it very simple, that title, Engineering living in a world of technology. What do I mean by world of technology? What is a world of technology? Well, from the phone in your pocket, to the camera that's recording this event, and the microphone I'm using currently, to the astronauts in space. All of them are interacting with, utilizing, engaging in technology. Technology has revolutionized the way we not only work with each other, but we work with these devices, we work with the world around us. And the people who create that world, people who and power and progress that world are the engineers. So, can I get the next slide? And just you can add, there you go. What is an engineer? That's the big question. So, what is an engineer? We can look at the dictionary. So let's turn to the dictionary. So, the definition of engineer is any person who takes the knowledge they have and applies it to find a practical solution to a problem. Any person who takes their knowledge and applies it to solve a problem in a practical way. So by that definition then, think about that, and all of you in this room are engineers. You all have taken knowledge you have to solve a problem. So congratulations, you can now add that to resumes, applications, engineer. That is now what you can add on. So let's see how the rest of the world compares with you guys. We have 100% engineer attendance in here. Let's look at college graduates. Can I the next slide? What percent of college graduates are graduating with engineering degrees. In the year 2013, only 5% of all degrees were engineering degrees. 5%. So companies that are using these engineers only get to utilize 5% of the students that graduate from college. Can I the next slide? Oh, there's a pie chart. 5%. So who's hiring engineers? Uh, get it, please. There we go. So, let's look at Forbes. Forbes every year publishes a list of the most valuable brands in the United States. This year, for 2013, seven of the top ten most valuable brands were engineering companies. Apple, Google, Microsoft, Samsung, IBM, Intel, and GE. Seven of the top ten most valuable brands. And by most valuable brand, they mean these are the companies that we recognize. Apple, everyone has used or seen an iPhone before. Um, Oh, no backwards. <laughs> yes, that one. Um, my most valuable brands. So these are pretty big companies to understate that. These are some of the most major companies that are making progress and changing the world around us every single day. And they only get 5% of those college entrances. So we have a dilemma. There are such wide openings and such expansive opportunities for the engineers to take advantage of that these companies are running out of people to hire. So how do we fix that problem? We need more engineers. And today, you all are going to find out how you can be engineers. You're all going to be an engineer, even more of an engineer, by the time we finish this presentation. So can I get my slide? What kinds of engineers are there? Any All right, so those are the basic like five broad categories of engineers. There's civil, there's electrical, mechanical, chemical, and software. Civil being infrastructural, they build the bridges and roads. Electrical being circuits, mechanical being machining, manufacturing. Chemical being chemistry. And software, software the programmers. So can you go to the next slide? When you break this down, there's two kinds of engineers. There's the hardware engineer, that's the person who works with the components, and the software engineer. So this is the difference between hardware and software. Can you click your question? Hardware engineers build things, while software engineers code things. Pretty simple. Next slide. Hardware engineers. Hardware engineers are people who take components. They take circuits, they take batteries, they take other kind of devices, and they put them together to create a device, a machine. That kind of, they arrange these parts in an order to accomplish a task. Next, and one more, there we go. So this is circuits, this is using electricity, they manufacture. They machine, they optimize, they're using optics, durability, these are all elements that go into hardware engineering. These are focuses that they're using to create these devices, these components. Next slide. Software engineers. 
Software engineers. So what does a software engineer do if that's a hardware engineer? Software engineers are the people who need to interact with that hardware. They need to tell the hardware what to do. And they do this with binary code as an example. So binary code is a sequence of ones and zeros. And it's the basic and fundamental way of talking to hardware and telling hardware how to talk to each other. When you plug in your printer to your computer, how does it know how to talk to that computer? How does the computer know what to send to the printer? It sends it over binary code, ones and zeros. There we go. So software engineers are programming the hardware to accomplish those tasks. Next slide. I myself am a software engineer. I've not done any hardware engineering, and you all today can become software engineers. You know, done, or I think it's three. I think it's three. There we go. There we go. Perfect. So I have been programming for five years now. I started when I was 13, 12, 13. I programmed in Java, Objective C, C++, uh, CSS, PHP, JavaScript, and MySQL. I know all of those and use those pretty much on a daily basis. Uh, I currently work at a company called uh, Loom Black Bag slash Pose Marketplace. Uh, we were a startup in LA and retail. Um, so I'm a web engineer at Pose Marketplace, and I've done QA testing, I've done, uh, which is quality assurance, I do debugging, I do optimization. So what do software engineers like myself do? Let's dive into this. Next slide. All right. I think it's two. All right. So hardware itself is pretty dumb. What does that mean? So hardware, the engineers that are making this hardware are absolutely brilliant. They're very smart people that are doing fantastic things with it. But the hardware itself is not very smart. What do I mean by that? Your computer at home that's doing all the wonderful things that you interact with and your toaster are about as smart as each other because they only have one job. Computers can only do one thing. Circuits can only do one thing. They can count to one, zero, and one. That's all they can do. So that is called binary code, as you've seen earlier. It's a sequence of zeros and ones. And what programmers do is they use these zeros and ones to tell the hardware what to do. As one in binary represents on, <coughs> on position, and zero represents off. So on is one, zero is off, so you can communicate with these electronic devices and tell them in what orders and what parts of them need to turn on and off. That's binary code. From there, you get into more high level, you get into languages. So these zeros and ones are the basic fundamental interfaces. Your printers, um, your cameras when they're communicating, they're using zeros and ones to send information and process information. From there, you get what's called an operating system. So all of these have used an operating system before. Windows is an operating system. Mac OS is an operating system. iOS, Android, all of those are examples of operating systems. The devices themselves are running on ones and zeros, but that element that you're interacting with, that interface, was written for an operating system. It was written on top of those ones and zeros. Ones and zeros are told what to do by that operating system. Next slide. So programming languages. Programming languages run on top of operating systems. The operating system is able to run these programs, and all the program is in itself is a list of instructions. That's all a program is. When computer programs are writing things, they're telling, they're writing lists and lists of things that the computer is going to do in a certain order. So if you are holding your phone and you want to take a picture, there's a task there sitting there waiting for you to press the button. Once you press the button, it says, okay, here's what we're going to do. First step is take a picture. Second step, save it. Third step, animate, move, shutter, close. And then the fourth step is start over. Start back again. That's a program right there. That itself is the camera application. So I think it's two. Oh, yeah, there it is. OK, one more. There we go. So what are programming languages? Programming languages are ways that people can interact with and talk to operating <laughs> systems. Now, as I was saying earlier, binary code is not very readable. You see long pages of zeros and ones, and you have no idea what that actually says. I have no idea what it actually says, and I don't try to, because I write in what are called high-level languages. High-level languages are what most of the developers are using today, because they look, read, and are written, similar to English. So those are three examples of high-level languages. There's PHP, Java, and Python. PHP and Python are used uh, almost exclusively for web development. Uh, Python can do a lot of things. It's a very fun language. And Java is written for applications. Android is written in Java. And those right there are examples of what those languages look like, as you guys can see. Um, so PHP is written in sequences. And there's all different ways to format this code. But each of those in itself is a language and a different way to interact with a different system. Next slide. So um, what is the work environment like? So what does a software engineer do when he's at work? Uh, twice or three times? Twice. There you go. One more. OK. So work environment. When I'm at work, what am I doing? Uh, it's a lot of fun. People think programming, and they go, oh, no, programmers, what do they do? They sit at their desk, they type code all day, staring at the screen, they clock out, they go home. Nope, not at all, actually. 
Um, working in LA, when I'm with my boss, I'm sitting two desks away from my CEO, three desks away from our te technologies officer, we have, compute, we have a customer service in the back corner. It's open. Everyone's talking to each other, everyone's interacting with each other. We have a foosball tournament every day at the end of the day, that's how we end. So it's a very fun, very easy environment. And it works because it favors productivity. You work at your own pace because you're getting your instruction to finish it. So that comic right there pretty much summarizes what it's like to work in a programming office. It's the number one legitimate excuse for slacking off. My code is compiling. So when you finish typing all this stuff and you click go, your computer has to read it all and assemble it all and tell what to do. It's very slow. So during that time, you can't really do anything. So you can do whatever you want to. And that's when the first of tournaments happen, that's when everyone goes on to lunch, you just compile the code. Okay. Uh, next slide. So how can you guys become software engineers? You know the languages, you have the languages that you need to learn, and you know the work environment. So how can you become one of these people? Uh, this plus. Or, yeah. Uh, okay, there we go. Keep going. All right. So first step, bigger project. I wanted to. This is two years ago. I wanted to pick a project. I needed to, wanted to learn how to uh, write a project. I wanted to learn how to write an iPhone app. So I went to. First step was to. I wanted to um, design an app for my school. I was like, okay, here's what I need to do. I have no idea. I've never written an iPhone app before. I've never seen iOS code before. I'm like, okay, how am I going to do this? So I picked my project. And I went to Google. And here's where it gets complicated. I went to google.com, G-O-O-G-L-E dot com. <laughs> and then that search bar. I typed in, here's where it gets tricky. You might want to write this down. How to write an iPhone app. And I got pages and pages and pages of results on all of these different ways that people can do this. You can just Google this. This is free. They didn't charge me for it. There's no jargon that's going to be using these specific keywords or anything. I just wanted to write it. So I had to Google. I had no idea what to do. So, uh, two more points, three more points. So, step three is question mark, step four is pocket. Anyway. <laughs> All right, so first step is picking your project. So that's the first step. I had no idea what I was going to do. I needed to do this. So I went on these pages. Uh, I went on this, these pages of results, and I was like, wow, wow, wow. There's no way I'm going to be able to do this. You look at, when, you, when you look at it as a whole, when you look at all these pages, like first there's like documentation on, doc, on the um, code itself. It's like, how to write Objective-C. That's the operating system. I didn't really care because I didn't want to know all of Objective-C. I just wanted to do specific things. So I said, okay, how am I going to write this down? So I went, I went back to Google again. How to do tables in iOS. And pages, 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 pages. And the first result was a tutorial. A tutorial. It was like, here's how you do <coughs> iOS. So I went on, followed along, plugged the information in, mostly copying and pasting. That is, if, to summarize my job in one sentence, it's copying and pasting. So I'm copying and pasting, assembling all these things, putting them in order. I click go, and it works. What? I've never written an iPhone app before. That's the first try. You click enter. It works. I'm running it on my phone. It only does one thing, and it lists the table. That's all it does. But it works. I've never done it before. So I kept going, and I said, okay, I need to make this. I need to actually get it to do something that's worth actually anything. So I put about 20, 30 hours into this of actual programming, and being brand new to the operating system, being brand new to the language, it's not bad. 20 hours. Average work week is 40 hours, not that bad. So 20 hours, I had a first version of my application ready to go in 20 hours. I created it, bundled it up, sent it to friends, said try to break it, see what's wrong. Played with it around, got some suggestions, put it back together. Well, okay, I've seen the next up. Now I'm 80 hours, so in two weeks, click into it. I have a final version, there's no more bugs. It all works completely, and it's all set. So I have now, as of now, it's been one year since I decided to write that first iPhone app. And as of yesterday, I think, it's had over 765 downloads at my school. And it's used on a daily basis by students, faculty, parents, and prospective students, all the eighth graders that want to go to us. So it's, it's really, it's, it was nice. And why did I want to do this? Why did I think this project? Well, because I was tired. We had a, we had a horrible website before high school. It was absolutely horrendous. So, to use it on your iPhone is a mess because it's all badly formatted, everything's hidden in layers, and it's junky, and all this other stuff. So I was like, let's make an easy way to do that. Let's make an easy way for students to access this. And I said, well, I'm not selfish, kind of. I was like, I want everyone else to be able to do this. So I wrote the app, published it, distributed it, and now it's been used like, you know, on a daily basis. They love it. They tell me what needs to get done. I just released version 2.5, whatever, I think, three weeks ago. 
And it's getting better every single time. And this is a project I started for fun because I wanted to try something on my own. I've never written any operating system. I've never written in a program before. I've never written an iPhone app. And in roughly a year, I had a version that was comparable to a lot of the other apps out there on the App Store. So the second one, you can go back one. The other thing you can do. You don't want to make an iPhone app because that's too daunting. You can like to do it. Web development. Web development. And this is last summer. Troy requires you to do an internship for some kind of company. And I was like, okay, I want to do computer science, obviously, because I want to go to computer science as a field. So I called my uncle, who was a developer at Amazon. And I was like, do you have any friends in LA that I can intern with? He goes, yeah, talk to some old Mexican phone calls and like that. So he gets me with this company called Little Black Bat. And I hook up with them, get everything set, and I start my internship, and I show up, and I tell my boss the first thing I buy, I have no idea how to do web development at all. And he goes, okay. All right, we'll start just small. So I, my job was, when I first started, for a week of normal workday hours, I would go on the site, and someone would tell me, this is broken. So I would go on the site, look for it, see if it was actually broken. And if it was, I would check that it was actually broken. I did that for a week. <laughs> week two, it was like, all right, I'm just going to do now. We're going to tell you what's broken, and then you're going to try to fix it. Now, initially, it was like this box is too high up on the website, so you move it down. So I was like, okay. Whew. Whew. There are 15,000 files that make up this website. How do I do this? Control F. Box. <laughs> there it is. Dimensions. Pushed it down by two. Send it back to my boss. Wow, you fixed it. Congratulations. I didn't expect you to do it. I did. <laughs> Three weeks later, I'm ready. Code for the site. I'm getting, I have my own development cycle, I have my own site for getting bugs, I have all of these things that they're tasking me with, and I'm fixing that. And this goes beyond basic CSS, this is PHP, which is kind of complicated language, this is JavaScript. And I had not Googled it for this. I have just seen the code interact with the code. It's very intuitive. It's like working with the language. You immerse yourself in it. You'll get to know it. So let's, let's, let's go over everything so far. So one, every single person in this room is an engineer. All of you are. Two, the world needs more engineers. Three, it's free to become and learn how to be a software engineer. So, who can be an engineer? Anyone. <laughs> Anyone can be an engineer. So, you know all these things. You have the opportunities, you have the tools, you have the assets. So, go change the world. Thanks so much.